It is your boy Triple G93 here, and I will be doing a lot of pressure on this left hand side as Forge is what you're seeing in this preview video on the right side. And the goal is, is to try and put ourselves in a situation where I can take the team and put it on my back to help relieve some pressure that my team will go through in this game. And so, if we want to go ahead and see how that turns out, you're going to have to watch a little bit further or check the chapters. But let's go ahead and just start talking about our build order in general. As you can see, we're going with a supply pad, upgrade supply pad, upgraded gen, and then we're going to be making that other supply pad, which means we got rolling economy as well. We're working on getting the power nodes right away so we can keep getting resources. And right now, it is uncontested, which is something you want to see because that means it could be free power. But there we go. Blue has shown up. We're going to go ahead and back away once we get this last any bit of power because all power matters. And now we're going to go after our second gen while we then start working on a mini base. So in this game, as I mentioned, I am playing as Forge. We're going to have a Desi as center. And then on the right side, we're going to have some sort of UNSC teammate. And the way this game is going to turn out as a whole, my thought process is, was I'm going to go ahead and go vehicle play in this game. Double garage. And just see what the enemy is going to be doing as a whole. One thing that I don't do as often as I would like is to go ahead and scout the enemy early and scout them often. And the second gen is going to be done, which means our armory is going to go ahead and be put down so we can go ahead and get our hero. And our army comp is going to start off with a consistent jackrabbit production. And then we're going to go ahead and figure out the right timing to go ahead and grab the second base. But for now, my teammates as well, Ginger Brian Man, he's going for a for two supply pad and two generator build with grabbing the mini base at the back and I'm going to be exposing a mini base for him to go ahead and take if he chooses to and he's usually the type of guy where the more buildings he has the better it is for him but our jackrabbits are going to go ahead and start their production and we're going to have a marine put in on hold position on our expansion side so when we're ready to go ahead and grab it we will be able to do so and we're also going to try and sneak a marine also in the back of the enemy's expansion so then that way we'll be able to see when they are expanding so we can see if we're aligned or not in regards to that economy game if we are ahead or if we are behind and with our first jackrabbit now popping out we want to go ahead and send that jackrabbit over to see what our enemy teammate blue is doing and look at that they actually grab the node right away which means this is something that they prioritize at the very beginning of the game and their army is coming out with their leader as well so looking at what they have they have a barracks with a war console and they have those upgraded gen and supply pads so it looks like Dark Blue is going to be somewhat aggressive as a whole. So I'm going to send my leader over to their side to see if I can go ahead and get some good damage in. Some good early game damage. Light Blue is showing to go hero play as well. And we'll see if we have scouts on green when that comes in. If not, we're just going to go ahead and focus on the engagement that's going to happen here with Dark Blue. So our... Hero is heading on over and there's the Marines. There's a good group of four Marines right there, which really isn't much. But the Jackrabbit, I'm trying to make sure it does not get caught by these Marines. He definitely wants to get rid of my Jackrabbit. But we're going to keep him there for now because we're going to start pressuring the mini base. So we can start working it down just a little bit. And since we still have not seen these Marines, we can't really engage on them yet. And here they come. Y move is going to get popped and we're not going to see it because we're going to go ahead and get that expansion base but we did see some damaged marines which looks like it was successful to a point and the marines are going to do some damage on our leader and their hero has just popped up as well even though it's unupgraded it's still not a fight I want to take by the bunker because that's just going to be hard for us to take everything out there our jackrabbit ended up getting annihilated so we weren't able to really see what's going on with green but there's actually a spartan over here on this side but we have plenty of jackrabbits and our hero as well spartan slam does come down which is going to be nice from them but heavy metal is going to be popped by me to make sure that they don't go ahead and get rid of any other jackrabbits besides the one that we just lost right now and with us focusing down on the spartan He's going to get eliminated, so that's a very big overextension by Light Blue. 
and this means our second base expansion is going to come relatively free. For now, we're going to get that Jackrabbit upgrade. We're going to get two vehicle depots down. We're going to sign them to our D-pad. And now we're going to work on getting that second base more established. And while we wait for the Jackrabbit to go ahead and get upgraded, we're going to send our Marines to go ahead and capture the node if possible. But it does look like Red is going to try and push. That's a couple of Hellbringers right there. They do have some snipers as well. But it's not like they can really do much with what we have right now since we have a lot of Jackrabbits. But if they upgrade those Marines, it is going to be a problem. And we kind of need some more vehicles to come in because this is going to start becoming a pressure, a problem down the line. A bunker is going to come down and a Vortex Lightning is going to come in as well. And a good scatter bomb is coming in by us. And with that Jackrabbit play going on right now, we're doing some good damage. And the leader went inside the bunker, which is unfortunate unfortunate because we cannot get rid of him now that we took out his shields and so now our second base is kind of in trouble just a little bit we're gonna have an air pad up the thought process is is to try and get nightingales up to go ahead and heal the base if possible while we continue our production for warhogs and try and get those marines to stay still to capture the node our base is taking a little bit of damage but we do have some time in order for us to go ahead and try and hold this off before the base goes ahead and gets destroyed and with what we've got we're going to go ahead and try and push there johnson's doing some good work on some of the jackrabbits but we did bring our hero in right in front of the bunker to go ahead and try and take out that bunker and it looks like we're going to get some good damage in and finally we've gotten rid of the units that are in the bunker and right now it's just a hero with two snipers and we got rid of the snipers and now a second bunker comes in which is going to be very annoying but we're going to now make our nightingale and since we pushed the leader back that's going to help us with our base just a little bit we're still doing some good damage here but now there's some red flags because light green light blue has shown up with their warhogs themselves over here and it does look like a cleansing beam is going to come down with a mac as well that's a great combination to help our army last a little bit longer which means we can go ahead and focus down on the other warhogs that are near us but our hero has taken a lot of damage we want to go ahead and retreat just a little bit to get some heals in so it does look like we're probably going to lose this mini base but we do have reinforcements coming in with the banshees so we're going to see if we can go ahead and pounce and it turns out some of the warhogs are actually hologrammed so the desi banshees are going to get rid of some of the marines I mean warhogs that were actually real and now all we have is a bunker we have to go ahead and deal with which is this is something that we can absolutely win with and mantis is coming into production by the enemy which this is going to be a little bit troublesome but with the army that we have we can easily get rid of this and they're trying to streamline the reinforcements but unfortunately that was not a good idea by them and now we're just going to focus on the hero if possible just keep this pressure coming our first ram comes in to stagger him and we're going to try and get some additional rams on the leader. But for now, this Wolverine that's showing up is going to be a little bit of a nuisance. Wymook does get popped by the Johnson, which means they're going to get a little bit of good defense on their side as well. And we're just losing all our Nightingales. And Matt comes in on their side, which is actually pretty effective on those Banshee. We're getting that vehicle level 2. But now we can go ahead and pincer the hero to see if we can go ahead and take them out. And just like what you saw at the beginning of the video, now we're in this situation where we're just trying to pressure blue. And we're trying to get rid of this base. And I thought I was doing it all alone, but we had some great assistance so far by the Decimus. But now Light Blue has shown up with their Warhogs. But we have some Kodiaks that are going to be in play. And we're going to just push back some of those Gosshogs now because they've just been recently upgraded. And yes, they do have Cyclops, but... It's still something that I do feel like we can easily take for an engagement to get rid of those anti-vehicle units that we're seeing right now. Because if Light Blue tries to show up, we have Siege to help out, which will be nice to see. And here we come. They got a couple of Wolverines here, which honestly, it's not even the right unit comp for me since I'm kind of like protecting the Destiny Banshees that are in the air right now. And so with the Siege coming in, we're going to try and focus down on these Wolverines to take them out. Scatterbomb is going to come down to work on the Nightingale that was healing as well as the bunker that's protecting the hero and we just have constant siege coming in which is nice to see and we were able to get rid of the base which means these units that were finally on hold position that one infantry that was scouting that base 
We're now going to be able to try and capture this node if possible. We're going to set up our Kodiak so then that way we can go ahead and pressure light blue. It turns out red is having some problems on the right hand side with green. So the Desi is probably going to go ahead and help them out after they start working on light blue's base. And that's going to be my cue to go ahead and at least keep this pressure up on my side. But as you can see, yellow actually has, I mean light blue actually has some siege. Turns out I'm yellow and I'm the one with the siege. I met scorpion tanks. And we're getting pushed right now by both heroes, I mean by both players right now. But light blue actually backed up just a little bit which is nice to see. We're going to put our Cody back, Kodiaks a little bit more forward back in order to help just protect them and still have that range to hit everybody that needs to get hit. But these Kodiaks, you know, they're just Kodiaks. Sometimes they love to listen to you, but the majority of the time they're going to circle around in general to finally set up once you all units or local units like what you just saw there. This is what Kodiaks do. They like to be a pain in the cannon. After that bad pun, we're going to go ahead and just keep on trying to pressure light blue. Because now the 2v1 is happening on our teammate's side where we're doing the double team. So with this jackrabbit with the extra vision provided, we're going to use it to keep the siege and pressure going. So then that way if light blue chooses to go help out their teammate, they're going to lose their army. And right now, the siege is working very well. The hero is over here by himself. And honestly, I don't even think it's a good idea because we have the army that can go ahead and fight. And we have another vehicle drop coming in as well. And this bunker could be a problem, but we do have nightingales, which means we can have something to respond to that. And the enemy is actually trying to push a light blue, which is a little bit unfortunate. A Mac comes down and it's quite the immaculate Mac by the enemy. And he's just moving on to Kodiak. I mean, to siege, to siege, to bunker, to bunker. <laughs> nice. But light blue did end up taking out orange's base, which is such a shame. Aatrox Burox does come in to try and keep the bunker alive so they can help their hero out. But it does look like we're going to be able to get rid of the hero, which is nice to see. Or he's going to actually run away, which is a little bit unfortunate. So we're going to focus down on the mini base, get rid of the vision but that these bunkers are providing. And now we're going to use this extra siege to start focusing down on Dark Blue's base. Right, we have that extra vision by that Nightingale that we actually left really early on in this game without actually utilizing it whatsoever but here we go we have our army we're giving additional supplies to our teammates because he lost that base but with the siege we have i think we're going to be okay we didn't move up our middle siege line the presumption is in case light blue comes from a different direction we don't want to have all our kodiaks in a one position such that it's going to be a problem and so with what we have that is a good amount of mantis that we're going to see heavy metal will be popped to go ahead and deal with this and here comes mechanical overcharge onto the mantises to try and go after the siege that you see here. But we got a Y move right on top of all the mantis and that's not really going to help them. Scatter bomb is going to come in as well and even though they have a cleansing beam coming in on our army, the splits have been incredibly good. So we did end up losing one Kodiak which is unfortunate and we lost a couple jackrabbits. But we are going to go ahead and save our second Kodiak. And even though there's some Banshees that are up in the air, which means our second Kodiak actually comes down, we're going to at least pull green over to us. And because of that, red's going to have the ability to push that right hand lane, which means green is going to end up resigning because of that. So all that's left is to try and get rid of the remainder of the players by going in with one more big gigantic push coming in from us. And we're pretty much just going to go after the bases as a whole. And so, with that being said, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like or talk about the video or do both or subscribe if you haven't done so already. I also have game development that I'm doing on the side as well. And so if you want to check that out, I have a Patreon down below. And as we go ahead and take care of this enemy that we have just saw, there's only one more left and they self-destructed their base and the victory has now been brought up let's go ahead and take a look at this stat screen so then we can go over who did great and who did all right and bad myself i dominated the supply game and units destroyed our teammate apple pie dominated the powers and the least units lost but only 12 units killed and 
our Desi went 13 for 37 with the most units built, but shout out to Baggy Stream 8895 for using the most leader abilities with those bunker drops, those max mechanical overcharge. They were definitely involved in that game, but we are very efficient. So with that being said, you have yourself a splendid one, splendid day, evening, or afternoon. Keep being awesome, and until the next commentary video.